Hello and welcome to Phil Quick. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how we streamline the customer's life cycle from A to Z. I'm talking sending leads to your sales team, your sales team submitting accounts to your secretary, charging your customers, setting up RMR, and so on and so forth from sending your text to the install job and even funding your accounts. So, payroll is all included as well. Now, here, the first thing I want you to note is we have a leads tab. And what you're looking at is a dashboard of somebody who has multiple roles. So first of all, the leads tab, if you click on this and say you were to get a flyer from, you were you sent out a flyer to a customer and a customer called you back off of a flyer. You can go to leads and click on new. Now when you do this, it's going to pull up this page. What you're going to be able to do is you will have your lead sources customizable so that perhaps let's just say it was Phoenix North that you guys submitted and sent out flyers and even even you want to track your marketing campaigns such as flyers dash PHX uh, 1002. You can have that all custom configured from your configuration tab so you can track exactly which marketing source is bringing you the most results. Having said that, let's just type this in this lead because we're talking to the customer and the customer says their name is Peter Pan. And with Peter Pan, he gives us his phone number. And to start, let's just say we create this lead directly over here. So this lead is now directly into PhilQuick. So leads are 100% included as well, so you don't pay anything extra for any of that. But as we have this lead, now I'm talking to this customer, and perhaps I'm talking to the customer and they say, you know what, my wife has been looking for an alarm. Let's write that note right here. And let's go to add note. And what you notice with our notes is everything is date, time, and stamped. So the user, I'm logged in as sample multi -man role manager, and you see the date and time that I actually submitted this. So I'm talking to this client, and perhaps they say, you know what, this sounds interesting. I actually want you to have a sales rep call me. So with PhilQuick, you can actually assign this lead to a salesperson, and the salesperson will get notified. One thing to note with PhilQuick, you'll see that we have a search box Bar for all our drop down menus that actually have a lot of items in it. So you could just type in the sales rep's name, for example, and it'll pre populate. So let's just say we did sample seller number one, we're going to give this lead to, we're going to associate and sign this lead to, and there's an action required. This action is the customer said to call the lead, and you want to call the lead, let's just say, Monday at, uh, he said, 3 15 p.m. Let's save this lead. Instantly, once I save this, now that sales rep named sample seller number one in our demo server got that notification saying, you have a brand new lead Monday morning, Monday afternoon at 3.15 p.m. So when the salesperson logs into their dashboard as well, they will see this lead in the lead actions, which we'll see later on in this demonstration. So having said that, you as the company owner or secretary can add it to the Google Calendar by clicking on this, and uh, you can even remove actions and so much more. So let's jump out and see the lead list. One thing to note here is you can go into your leads and check out the lead list. What is happening with all your leads at your company? What's very important to note here is you can do so many, so much with this advanced search field. So perhaps you want to go and take a look at all your leads that have been disqualified. Hit the search. Why is this important? Over time, what we've noticed is security companies and dealers, if they're having their sales reps or your team disqualify leads, later on at some point in time, you can go in, take a look at all your disqualified leads, and perhaps call these people back. So as you see, this was a lead source that was disqualified and it was a referral. Why did this customer not want to do business with us? Let's click on it. And as you see, the wife said the husband was actually looking for an alarm. We can give this customer a call back and possibly turn this into a customer. If this was, you click reactivate the lead. No need to continue to re-enter the information twice. And now we have this back in lead status. You want to associate a salesperson to it. And by the way, we are integrated with the credit bureaus. So you can actually run the credit from directly within the software. And as you see, we ran it before. This is a 689 credit score, which is a B credit class. So why not try and get this customer back, giving them something perhaps to 
to do it. You can rerun the credit again if it's at a later time and so much more. So having said that, that is the leads with the actual lead list. If I go back to the lead list, you can click on advanced search and go crazy with all your leads on how exactly you want to filter your leads based on city, states, and so on and so forth. Ones that are assigned to sales reps, ones who are not with actions. And as you can see, it's pretty intuitive. So let's click the close there and I want to return back to the dashboard. I want to show you on the dashboard, you have a calendar icon. If we were to click this calendar icon, what it's going to do is it's going to bring up the technician calendar and you'll see you can jump ahead days, go back days. You can click on it directly from here. One thing to note is blue. Those are installs. Purple, those are your service tickets. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do a service from directly within PhilQuick as well. And keep in mind, we don't charge for services. So it's 100% free. And wait till you see how in, how in detail and quick and simple it is to actually use. So let me click out of that really quick and show you the two ways that you're actually able to accept a brand new account. So here on the customer, on your, on your dashboard, somebody with multiple roles, you'll see we have the company news. So the company news shows the news to every individual who's at the company. Now, if you want to go to your configurations tab and go to company news, watch how quick and simple we created a nice clean editor to where you can do anything directly from here. Say you wanted to insert an image, you wanted to perhaps highlight this and make it link uh, to a URL. You can click on this, click the URL. You can have it open in a new window. You type the URL link right there. It's very quick and simple to actually edit your company news. Perhaps a lot of companies, they like to do incentives. You like to highlight stuff, click on this, and you can actually highlight in a certain color. So let me go back to the dashboard and explain the next, these four tags that you're seeing on your dashboard. So on the dashboard, you'll notice there's a blue tag, a red tag, a purple tag, and a green tag. Well, the first one is the blue tag. This is two accounts that are awaiting acceptance. You see, in the industry, we have created and invented a systematic way that for specifically for alarm companies and alarm dealers to streamline the customer's life cycle so that you can have your sales reps enter the accounts or affiliate partners enter their accounts from within their portal and automatically push it to your secretary. So basically, if your sales reps get an account in the field, they can from their smartphone device, which by the way, it works on any device, Apple, uh, Android, they can submit it directly from their phone and it will automatically, even iPads and tablets, so they can submit it directly and it will push directly over to your secretary that you have a brand new account that is waiting to be scheduled with the technician. And also, after your secretary schedules it, you obviously want to charge your customer either before the install or after. That's what this red tag is. This is setting up your customers on RMR or simply just collecting their activation fees and sales upgrades. Uh, the, blue, the purple tag is your technician schedule that is waiting to be installed. So you already scheduled your technicians and you want to look at all the jobs on the calendar that are waiting to be installed. And then finally, if you sell off accounts, it'll be in this bucket over here here that you have four accounts awaiting to fund. If you're setting it up on in-house, your contract monitored accounts, you won't see it in this pile over here. These are the ones you're selling off to your central stations, such as Monotronics, ADT, and so on and so forth. So one another thing to note on your dashboard is you have a very clean company performance. You can see your chargeback amounts when you hover over, your funded dollar amounts, the amount of chargebacks you had, your funded accounts, your canceled accounts, installed, and the amounts that you have sold. As you see up here, you can click on this, and this is filtering by this year. You can go last month. You can choose any custom range. Everything is really custom. So then next on the right-hand side, you see your performance versus time. How is this important and why? Well, if you see some big graph that you had a lot of accounts that funded in a certain month, you can go back and say, what did we do different in that month? Continue to do that throughout the year. And you can obviously increase the amount of income that comes to your company. If you want to take off certain metrics or choose certain metrics, you can do that by simply selecting these. Hover over points and see more, more analytics on your dashboard. 
Next, we have the seller rankings and the team rankings. So your sales rep rankings, you'll get to see who are your top salespeople at the company. You can hover over certain, certain numbers and see different types of analytics. On the right, you would build your team rankings. So you would associate sales teams to sales reps. And uh, for example, you have a sales team that has 10 sales reps. Every time those sales reps get sales, you can customize, custom create all that from your, your sales team tag, ta tab right here on the side. But then also on the right-hand side, you can filter any of these by uh, date ranges and see who has been the top salesperson in the last 30 days, who has been the top sales team the last 30 days, and so on and so forth. And you get to hover over these and see more analytics. Okay, so let's go back into uh, the, the, the customer life cycle and show you how it will look like exactly from a sales rep. Okay, so I just logged in as the sales rep. And if you take a look, the sales rep dashboard is a little different than the company dashboard. So here, the sales rep still sees the company news that we created. And on top of it, remember we set up Peter Pan to call this lead? One thing to note is all lead actions. So any lead that is associated with a salesperson, this particular user who's logged in, who has a specific action to do, whether it be call the lead, whether it be to visit the lead, it's clean on his dashboard. So you will see we have custom tags, like today he's supposed to call this lead and he can just click on this directly over here or he can enter that lead. But as you see, we associated this lead, we assigned this sales rep, member Peter Pan, this customer, we associated and assigned this lead to him. So he sees it directly on his dashboard, but keep in mind, he also got that notification that he had a brand new lead. So when he logs in, he can take care of it, especially on that day, add it to his Google Calendar, and so much more. Now, let's just say, because he's supposed to call this lead today at this time. So let's enter into this lead directly over here. I already Already have the customer's information as you can tell we ran the credit one thing to note is when you're running your customers credits you can choose whether or not you want specific salespeople say you want Steve to be able to run his own credits and Tom to not be able to you can custom create all that to associate who is allowed and has the permissions to run credits but let's just say you did want a specific salesperson to run credits you can individualize it by saying I want the sales rep to see the credit score and the credit class or perhaps I only want him to see the credit class. You have full control over all that. Sales reps will not see the credit report. They will only see the credit class or the credit number. Next, I want you to note, so this salesperson contacts this customer and we find out that this customer actually says they want to switch the status from calling this lead because we just did that now to, do you mind showing up to my property tomorrow at, let's just say, 3 o'clock p.m.? Let's switch the status to visit the lead and we're going to visit this lead. It's going to be tomorrow at, let's just say he he said 3.05, oh, that's a.m. Let's just say uh, visit this lead tomorrow at 3.05 p.m., okay? And let's save that lead. So we just saved that, and now if I go back to the dashboard, one thing you'll note is now it's switched the status from this to visit the lead tomorrow at 3.05 p.m. And you see today we have another lead to actually call. Let's contact this customer, enter the lead, and now as you see, we're in this customer's account. We're talking to them, and basically this customer says, you know what, that sounds awesome. I'd like to do business with you. So you can instantly go over here and convert this to a customer. Watch what just happened. With PhilQuick, all the data gets carried over. No need to double enter any information, hence streamlining the customer's life cycle all the way from the salesperson, the lead, to the secretary, to the technician, and your office admin from payroll as well. So you will not have to double enter any of that information. So we would just simply fill out this form, complete the emergency contacts, the product that needs to be installed, and submit this directly to our secretary. After we submit this to our secretary, she will get that notification that there is a brand new job to schedule with the technician, and we will take it on from there. So some things to just show you really quick is you can create your products and choose your products. Let's just say we're going to go with the Lynx 5000 keypad and we're gonna and we're gonna want one of those. And we're gonna go with door contacts. We're gonna need three of those. We're gonna also do a motion detector and we're gonna choose one of those. And perhaps a key fob remote. Key fob remote control 
and we want one of those. So what's going to happen is the sales rep is going to tell the secretary what they want to install. However, sometimes things will change versus what the sales rep wanted and what the technician actually installed. Keep in mind, we are fully customizable on the technician being able to enter what he installed. And when it comes time to payroll, you'll be able to see what was requested by the salesperson and what was actually installed by the technician. And yes, we do inventory as well, 100% inventory management. So everything else is very simple and straightforward here. You get to choose your activation fees. All, all these are customizable. And your central stations, your contract terms, all customizable. And as well, all your monitoring rates, monitoring plans, and so on and so forth. So your emergency contacts you have over here, you can choose. And if you ever want to add more emergency contacts, you can simply click on that and go over over there. Now, let me go back to the dashboard as this salesperson, and I don't want to save that form. What I'm going to do is this. You will see that on the dashboard, you will have your seller performance versus the seller performance versus time. So they will be able to see themselves how much money did they make this month. If they want to filter by any date range, perhaps they want to see how much money they made last year, click on this, hover over and they'll be able to see that. If they want to see their performance versus time, they can see that directly over here. And what happened in the month of November that I got a lot more money, obviously, that came into me, hmm, probably I worked a lot more that month. So you get to see all that so that sales reps can perform at their peak. One thing to note is you can have certain sales reps see the seller rankings and the team rankings, or you can hide this from certain sales reps and show it to other sales reps. So one thing to note as well is you see how I'm logged in as sample seller number one. This is highlighted in blue because that's me. I get to quickly see where I stand this year. How about if I want to go, where did I stand last year? I was a top salesperson. And also, I belong to this team, which is in second place, by the way. And we need to do better to get those extra five accounts to become, in, to become first place. So you get to see all that on the dashboard. Let's go into leads. As a salesperson, you can go in and create a brand new lead uh, yourself. So I only, as a salesperson, will see my lead and everything that's associated with me. Say I'm knocking on a door and I, and I actually have a brand new customer named Mark Johnson. Let's type this in, Mark Johnson. And I'm talking to Mark Johnson at the door and he gives me his phone number. And he says, uh, yeah, no problem. It seems interesting. I'm just busy right now. Uh, you know, I was, uh, I was looking into an alarm system, was looking into an alarm system. Okay, perhaps he's looking into an alarm system. I want to write notes. Keep in mind it's date, time, and stamped. And then also he says, do you mind calling me back, you know, next Friday at uh, call the lead? And uh, see, I'm associating an action with it. And he wants me to call him back next Friday, the 8th at, let's just say, 2 o'clock p.m. And I save this. So now on my dashboard, I can even add this to my Google Calendar. And yes, it works for my smartphone device or my iPad if I'm in the field. I can add this to my Google Calendar. And by the way, if I want, if I have the privileges as a salesperson to run the credit, you see how it doesn't let me because it says you need to specify an address. We all know you either need to specify an address or you need to put the social security number uh, into here in order to be able to run the credit. But it's as simple as that. And now when I go back to my dashboard, you see how we have Mark Johnson here as well. And if I would have added it to my Google Calendar, when it comes time, I'll instantly get a notification to call this person as well. So another thing you can do is go to your leads and see my leads and they get to see all their list. It's very important that you have your sales reps actually go through their disqualified leads at a certain given time. We talked about that before because these can turn into sales. You'll be surprised how many times customers will actually tell you, you know what, I just didn't want to do business with you at that time because I had something going on or the salesperson was too pushy at the time and then they turn into a sale. Next, they can go to my invoices and because we actually do payroll as well where you'll be able to custom configure it your own way, uh, you'll be able to see that every invoice that is paid, it actually bulks up in the paycheck that you created. How do we do that? It's very simple, which I'll show you when we get to payroll. However, on this paycheck, he got $1,000 and $55. And what's the breakdown of it? You see all the commissions that are directly over here. If you add any bonuses, backends, you get to see all that as well. But the main thing to note here is how many times right now do you have salespeople calling you in and saying, hey, did I get paid on that customer? Uh, last name was Craig. I forgot the first name. Well, all they got to do is type in Craig over here in the description, hit the enter button. And oh yes, I remember this customer right here. I was paid on the 20th and let me go into the invoice and I see over here the 
the exact breakdown of the invoice. If they want to go back into the account details, they can go back to the account details, see exactly what it was that uh, they that happened on this account. And one thing to note is it automatically creates tags based on the status of the customer. And if you look here, you'll see some things in yellow. What's that? That's basically when a customer uh, has, uh, sorry, when a sales rep requests something to be installed and then the technician goes there and something changes as you see he said two door contacts but there was three typically the installer may say that there was a third door contact on the paperwork you get to see that and when doing payroll perhaps you're going to be charging based on the installed it's all fully customizable to do that so as you get to see also on the customer's account, you see some tags up here. And don't worry, sales reps, when they actually log in, they will not have access to seeing the customer's phone number, address, once they submit it and accept it from your secretary. So that way, so that way later on in the future, obviously, it's very important that the customers are yours, uh, not the sales rep to be able to go in and see all that data and information. Next over here, I'll show you back on the dashboard. This is the dashboard of the sales rep and that pretty much finalizes the sales rep dashboard. Keep in mind, we have so much more to come with PhilQuick and sales reps dashboard. So if you actually check back with us, we are going to be adding so many more features. The software keeps growing. Okay, so now we're logged back in as someone who has multiple roles. And keep in mind, we submitted accounts from the sales rep portal over to our secretary. So right now, the secretary has two accounts that are waiting to be accepted and scheduled by our technician. So if I click on this, one thing you'll note is the customer's information shows up over here. We have this job to schedule out, and it's in Tucson, Arizona. This is the customer's name. This is the installation date, so it's for tomorrow between 8 and 10. 10 a.m. Do I want to view the customer or do I want to accept and complete it? If you click on view, you can still accept and complete it after viewing it directly over here. So perhaps you just want to view the customer's account and see what's been, what is uh, going to be getting installed. Okay, that's interesting. And uh, perhaps you want to take a look and say, okay, I want to decline this account for some reason, or perhaps I want to accept and complete it. For this purpose, let's just accept and complete it. And now, keep in mind, we're streamlining the customer's life cycle. Your sales rep got a sale in the field or on the phone. They submitted it to your secretary. And now your secretary is going to finalize this work order. So she has the information that's directly over here. And the sales rep is saying he needs the install on tomorrow between 8 and 10. So let's open our scheduler. So as you can see directly over here, it's going to be 8 to 10. Which technician do I want to give this to? So I want to give it to sample tech number one. You would see the name of the technician and you click on here it's going to be between 8 and 10 let's click OK and now this technician after saving this form is going to get this job so perhaps for example you want to put this online as well with one of our integrated partners such as Avangard, Monotronics, uh, ADT you will be able to actually put these accounts and push them directly over to uh, the central stations from within the software now uh, for prorate and monitoring fees, everybody actually collects and does it differently. We give you a special way to calculate your prorate fees if perhaps you're in-housing this customer. So on the right over here, if you see there's a sold and an in-house for monitoring monitored account, what basically sold is, is if you're selling it off to the central station, you would leave it as sold. If you want to in-house this customer and set them up on auto recurring billing, you can do that as simple as selecting this in-house. And now PhilQuick will even help you calculate calculate your prorates. So one thing to note is, let's just say in this city, it's 9.8% sales tax. You will see right here, the sales rep said there's an activation fee of $99. Do you want this to be taxable? Let's select yes. And in this case, the sales rep said there was no, he didn't collect any upgrades for any of the equipment. If you did, it would be entered here and you can make this taxable or not. Next, we have the monitoring rate. It's $42.99 and the pro rate. So let's just say this customer, as it shows, is uh, getting installed on tomorrow, the third. And between this time, when we click on this pro rate calculator, watch how clean this is. PhilQuick is already calculating that there's 28 days left in the month. So at a total based on the monitoring plan that we selected of $1.43 per day, the pro rate amount at $28 is going to be at 28 days is going to be 
be $40.12. Keep in mind, this is monies that is coming into your company. You don't need to write it down. We're even integrated with the merchant, so you can actually go in and set it up on auto recurring, collect all your payments up front with a simple of with a matter of simple clicks, and I'm going to show you that. So, how many months are you going to collect up front? Perhaps you want to collect one month up front, let's just say. Okay, and perhaps uh, if you click on this and you go to the tab, it's going to show you that it's going to be forty-two ninety-nine. And as you note over here, the tax amount is actually bulking up. It's calculating all your taxes based on what you're saying you want to tax. Perhaps you don't want to tax the pro rate. Let's unselect this. You see how it goes down. Let's reselect that and you will see something else. The customer perhaps wants to pay 12 months up front, one year. Click on 12, hit the submit, and you'll actually see that now there's $515.88 in upfront months to charge. Okay, so for this purpose, let's just go one back at one again, and let's scroll down because this is an in-house customer that you're going to be charging every single month through and from Philquick. No, you don't need to always set it up. You do it one time when you're setting up the account and charging it, and you forget about it, and Philquick will automatically put it on the customer's tab, charge your customer, and give you a notification as well when payments go through. So over here, let's choose the start date. So perhaps, and it's fully customizable to how you run your company, but because we're going to be charging the pro rate, so from tomorrow till the end of the month, and we're going to be collecting one month up front in this case over here, uh, we're going to charge this customer, let's just say they want to keep it simple and they want to start their auto recurring billing on the third of next month. So what you can do is you click on the start date here, and we're ready in April, so let's go over to May, and it's going to be the third, and perhaps you want to keep it simple with no end date inside. So it's going to keep charging them until they call in to cancel and they want to pay monthly, not quarterly, semi-annually or annually. And then the billing is going to be the third of every month. Okay. So as simple as this, they're already paying for all of April. They're already paying the pro the pro rate of all of April. They're already paying for May. And now in May on May 3rd, they're going to pay for the following month. Okay. So you're always going to be one month in advance. And we recommend using this method. You can customize it to however you want, but this keeps you one month ahead of always charging your customers in case something happens. So it's as simple as that. You can take a look directly over here. And what happens is with this customer, it's all done and filled out. It was that simple. If I didn't have to explain it in a video, you could probably do this within a matter of probably one minute, 30 seconds to a minute. So let's save this customer right now. So what it just did is it scheduled your technician to go out to the job. You didn't have to print anything out. He got a notification saying you have a brand new job tomorrow between 8 and 10 o'clock with a link. He can click on it and go directly to his dashboard or he can actually log into his portal, your technician, and see that Joseph Massey customer. Okay. So another thing is we're integrated with alarm.com. If you want to put this on with alarm.com, say your secretary wants to put it on or your technician wants to, it's as simple as clicking this alarm.com button and you would have all the features directly over here. Say you want to go in and choose the interactive gold package and choose any certain add-ons, you can do all that. Now keep in mind on our on our uh, YouTube channel, we have a video of exactly how to set it up with alarm.com, which is so simple and put it online with the central station. So I won't show you that right now. It's very simple. Uh, now the next step in this process is I want to show you if I go back to the dashboard dashboard. Now there are six accounts awaiting to be charged. And let's just say you want to set this customer up on auto recurring billing and also charge that customer, Joseph Massey. So this red tag is all the monies that is coming into your company. It's just sitting in this pile right here waiting for you to collect. So no longer do you have any monies that's supposed to come into your company accidentally paying out to your sales reps or your technicians and you don't charge it to your merchant. It does not go away until you actually successfully collect it. So when I click on this, it shows there's pending charges of a total of $726.61. Now I can filter and see here by the monitoring account. These are my sold accounts and this is my in-house one that we just did. As you see, there's a total of $199.96. Now to show you how simple it is to charge this customer and also set it up on auto recurring billing, let's go and do that. So we click on Joseph Massey. 
And what happens is it shows the status as well on the payment info tab. So this is an in-house customer. It's not charged yet and the auto recurring billing is not set up yet. So you take a look over here on the left side under setup and service fees. Let's uh, see. So he has a total of $199 to, and 96 cents to charge. There's zero that was paid and the remaining balance is $199.96. Let's show the breakdown of the fees. Keep in mind, this is what we did when we set up the account. So you don't need to write it down on a piece of paper or any of that stuff. You can see the total right here. This was for the activation fee, for the prorate, for any upfront months. And this gets updated in real time. So if, for example, the technician goes out there and now he's collecting an install upgrade, it's going to automatically switch the status and come back in as that money is pending to charge. And it'll even be on your dashboard. Yes, PhilQuick is that smart. So let's just set this up. You can either click on it from here and it will bring down that we have $199.96 to charge. I can click on this and choose the MasterCard that we already have on file with the customer. If I wanted to write a note to the customer, I can. Perhaps it's thank you for your business. They will get that notification that they have successfully paid the $199.96. And then we can add this payment. So right now it's logging into the merchant in the backside. It just charged the customer. And now that we successfully created this charge, as you see, what happens is the money is going to get deposited into our bank account automatically and it shows the transaction ID. If the transaction failed and this is integrated with our merchant, if it did fail, you'd be able to see that a billing mismatch, the credit card is numbers wrong or the address verification mismatch and all that. Uh, over here, you can click on this and print out your proof of pay, your print receipt. You can edit the note. You can also cancel or refund within the software. No need to go into the merchant, although you can and actually do any information there. Next, you can also see you can add any credit cards, bank accounts on file, or even perhaps enable invoicing to send out an automatic invoice to this customer. All that is from within here. But let's set up this customer now on auto recurring billing because we just collected all this, the pro rate, the activation fee, but now we need to set this up on auto recurring billing. You have one of two ways to do that. You can create the subscription from here or if they already, you already have an existing subscription, you can click on that. Or perhaps you can also, you just want to click on this tag here. We make it simple and clean for you to quickly activate and, act, and, and do everything from within the software. So we want to charge $47.20 to the MasterCard on file. And what you'll notice here is the start date, like we said, is the third of next month. There's no end date in sight and the billing is monthly. Let's create the subscription. It's creating it and setting it up on auto recurring billing right now. It's done. We got the subscription ID from our merchant. $47.20 is going to get charged monthly on this MasterCard on file. And now every month you'll see the transactions over here. And then also on top of that, you will see the total on the right hand side of how much monies you collected from this customer. That is it. That's how you actually charge your customers and set it up on auto recurring billing. That simple. So if we return to the dashboard, you will see that we had six accounts to charge and now there's five. So let's go back into here here and perhaps charge this customer that's a sold off to Monotronic, sold off to ADT, sold off to your central station or whoever you sold off your account to. Let's go into here and it shows there's $142.89 to charge. Watch how simple it is. You click on not charged. Choose the MasterCard we already have on file. If you want to write a note, click add the payment and it is done. It charged it and now you're getting this monies directly into your, your account. So I want to show you one thing with let's just say another customer. Uh, you go into here and as well you want to, the, this customer called in and said I want to add a visa on file. You can click on credit card, go in over here, choose a visa and perhaps you want to write for the brand new visa card number and you want the expiration date as 17. If they have any billing name that's different, any billing address that's different, you could do that. You can add this credit card on file. Perhaps you wanted to add a bank account on file. You can enter all that. Yes, you can charge on bank accounts e-checks directly from within the software. So now when this charge over here of 142.89 is supposed to be charged, you will have two options. Which card do you want to charge on file? The Visa or the MasterCard? It's that simple with us to actually utilize and use this. So let's go back to our customer's pending charge. You see the list over here and now it's only 383.76. So now on the dashboard, there's four accounts to charge. There's six accounts awaiting to be installed. And then there's four accounts awaiting to be fund. Before I get into that, let me show you how to schedule a service. So be, let's just say we're doing inventory and we're looking at our quantities on hand. And we say, how many door contacts do we have at our company? So I see that we have 180 door contacts at our company. Let me click on the plus icon. 
We have 75 in this warehouse. We have 75 in this warehouse. The technicians, you see the breakdown of the 180. But perhaps I'm getting a call, a phone call from a customer named Mark, and I can't hear his last name. So we have a quick search tool that's up here on the upper left-hand side to quickly search your customer database to pull their account right away. Let me show you. So I click on this and I say Mark. Okay, I click on, I type Mark. And sorry, sir, did you say your name was Mark? Uh, can you say your last name? Yeah, Mark Farmer. Okay, I can already see it's online with the central station, but let's click on over here. At the top of the customer's account, you'll see tags. This is online with the central station. It's been charged, it's installed, paid the tech, funded and paid the sellers. So I'm talking to this customer. I can scroll down to the notes. As you see, we have we have notes that have that the customer was in a specific status that's directly over here. And let's just say I'm talking to him and he says, I'm having an issue with my back door. We have a services tab that you can click on over here because he's having an issue. And as you see on this customer, we have a previous service that we did for this customer. All the services will show up here in time. So as you see, uh, the, the alarm kept going off, but I'm talking to him and he says, my back door sensor fell off. Let's create a brand new service and let's type in the issue. So what's going on? Sir, he says his back door sensor fell off. We enter back door sensor fell off, and perhaps we say, Sir, in order to come out and uh, fix that, it's going to be $65 for a service fee. He says, Okay, no problem. And we click on open the scheduler, and now we want to see when we're going to schedule this tech the, the, to, to do this job. I'm talking to the customer. I say, I have everything available today. He says, No, I won't be able to do it. Can you do tomorrow? I can do it tomorrow between 8 and 10, or perhaps I can do an 11 to 1 o'clock. You know what? 11 to 1 will work. So I'm going to schedule it directly over here. It's going to be between 11 and 1 with this technician. Click OK. And now this customer, as I'm talking to him, uh, he says, just make sure, please, that uh, I have to be at work at 1 o'clock so the tech is early. Customer needs to be at work at 1 p.m. Please be early to the job. Is there anything else I should know, sir? Yeah, I have a big dog, so um, please make sure he doesn't come out back. You can write any notes for the technician directly over here. So let me show you really quick. I'm going to create this service. That simple. The technician just got notified that he has a brand new service. It, Phil Quick, logged in, pulled all the zoning information, and now what it did was it told the technician he's got a brand new service. Here's the link on his dashboard. It put it, and he's there and able to actually go to this job for sample technician number one and I'm going to show you all that from the technicians portal so let's log out right now of this user and let's go into the technician portal Okay, so we just logged in uh, as the technician portal. You'll see the technician sees it different on the dashboard. I'm going to explain what late jobs are. He has today's jobs and then he has tomorrow's jobs directly on the dashboard. Then if he wants to see all of his jobs on a calendar and so much more, he can do that by seeing all of the jobs. But the job we just scheduled was for service for Mark Farmer. You see how it's tomorrow's jobs and it shows right here. If he were to click on it, Look what it did. It went into PhilQuick. It automatically got all the zoning information. It also tells him the issue was the backdoor sensor fell off. He can see all this from his smartphone device. He can do it from his home. He can do it from anywhere on any device. He can get a printer-friendly version by clicking on this, so he has it on one page, and he can take that, or perhaps he wants to add it to his Google Calendar. Very simple to actually see all that. So as the technician does this and prepares for tomorrow, he can do whatever he needs to do. If he wants to finalize it, because he already went and perhaps fixed it, uh, fixed it on the site or he fixed it over the phone, he can finalize his services by clicking on that today. So next I want to show you the dashboard. Late jobs, what that means is, so you scheduled a, t a job yesterday or the day before and the technician did not finalize his work order yet. So when it gets to the end of the day of that install day, it's going to show up in red on his dashboard over here for him to finalize and tell your company what he installed. So let's go into this one and finalize this work order. So as we're here, what you'll notice is you will see all the information in order to finalize the work order. So the requested is what was requested by the sales rep. What was installed is what was installed by the sales, the, the technician. Because sometimes what was installed is different than what was requested. Now, keep in mind, it's very important to note that if something changes and the technician perhaps puts three door contacts, it goes yellow right away. Why? Because what was requested versus what was installed changed. Perhaps we want to go back and that was a mistake the yellow goes away but if it was three door contacts and it was on the sales rep because it was on the paperwork he can scroll down to the notes and write the third door contact was on the paperwork 
And yes, the sales rep didn't answer his phone, perhaps he said. So what right over here, what you'll see is if you want to put any installation confirmation number, and by the way, every central station is different, so we have it mapped. If you're putting this account online with Monotronics, uh, this, you'll see these specific fields where it'll save it, and then you'll be able to push it to Monotronics. And the zoning information, they can choose, for example, the zone 001. It's a door contact. You could choose your event type. You can even choose all of the stuff directly from here. And perhaps this door contact is the back door, uh, and then you would type in a description over here. Hit the save button. Instantly, it saves it, finalizes his work order. And on top of it, what you get to see is the inventory will get deducted based on what he installed. And on top of it, it's all logged from within Philquick. So let's just exit out of this and go back to the dashboard. He gets to see his activity on the dashboard right here. But also, let's just say you want to see all your upcoming jobs as a technician. You will see them all listed over here. He can go to his open jobs or he can go to his previous job history and see that. And on top of it, he can view everything on a calendar. So we're by default on weekly, he can click over any of these to get over directly to the customer's account. And by the way, like I said, he can put it online with alarm.com, add two-way voice, and everything that he needs to get done directly from within the software. So as well, what you notice is you can go ahead weeks, you can choose a monthly view and see everything that happened in, in the past or in the future that's coming up and everything is linkable. Remember, keep in mind the purple are the services and the blue are the installs. So next, what he can do is go to his invoices. Perhaps, you know, you don't need uh, this, the technician to always call you and say, hey, did you ever pay me on that customer named Ray Holt? Well, he can just type in over here, perhaps Ray and see all the customers named Ray that he got paid on. And it was Holt, this one right over here. Let's Let's click on that. That's a service. As you see, it says service or the installation. He gets to see all that. Let's go to the inventory and go to my inventory. Now on his inventory, it updates in real time. So door contacts, motion. Yes, you can choose by uh, brand. You can also put it by uh, model number and all that. It's fully customizable. My logs, if you go to the logs, you select that. He can choose the product. Let's just say this door contact you want to see. Everything that happened that I installed from this date on. And uh, perhaps he wants to go back from this date on, show the logs. It'll show all the door contacts. Everything that I did with door contacts. Phil Quick will automatically uh, do create these logs as you interact with the software. You can So this one, I picked it up on this date and it shows the user that did it. They transferred from this warehouse to me. So I went and picked this up, let's just say three door contacts I got 15 more and I had 18 on hand at that time so it's fully customizable and uh, it, it logs everything from there so let's log out as a technician and let's go to the next step Okay, so we're back on the customer's dashboard, and now that your technician has finalized work orders, you also can see more jobs that are upcoming by clicking on this purple tag. You get to see all the jobs that are, are scheduled with the technician and not yet installed or finalized, so you can see all that directly there. And then as well, what you get to see is your accounts that are waiting to get funded. So let's start getting into some of the payroll features and so on and so much more. So let's click on this, and as you will see, if you are selling off accounts to a central station or a, someone who's purchasing accounts from you, you can enter the revenue from the fund. You can even enter the holdback amount and you can also choose the funding date. Let's just say it's getting funded on Friday because that's what it shows on your report. You click the update, it directly shows it there. You can filter by the customer's name to pull that one customer on the report. And just so you know, we're actually working on ways with central stations and funding sources to have that auto populated. So check back with us and see if your central station offers that for directly within our software. You can check with us. Okay, so right now let's go over and show you a little bit about the technician payroll. And keep in mind, you're going to go under all your funding and payroll stuff is going to be in the funding and payroll tab on your left hand side. So we categorized it nice and clean in weekly tasks to do because typically you're going to do some payroll weekly and it's categorized in order of what people typically do. They'll fund their accounts if they have any uh, funding source and then you'll do your technician payroll, sales rep payroll, paying your invoices and some more. But uh, typically you can go in any direction whichever you want, but we grouped it nice and neat for you to see the order that typically people use. So let's do some technician payroll. And I want you to keep in mind here that what's awesome about the way we do payroll is number one, it will only show the jobs that your technicians have finalized. So if your technicians have not installed the job yet, or perhaps they 
didn't tell you what they installed the job. Keep in mind, you need to know for inventory management what was deducted from their truck. So if they don't tell you what they installed, kind of like invoicing you, well, you're not going to see it over here in, in the actual list of your technician payroll. So as you see, this is all, his name is sample technician number two in our demo server, but this is a service for this date and it was in Los Angeles, California. So let's create the invoice. And what you see is a side-by-side -side calculator that we have, and uh, it shows up here at the top, your f the, the job has been finalized, just to get another view of it. All the accounts have been charged, so perhaps the technician had an upgrade, and let's just say it was $150. If you didn't collect this $150 yet, this would show up in red here, warning you, be careful. If you're going to pay a technician on this upgrade, unfortunately, it's not collected yet. You can go back into the Payment Info tab and collect it before paying him or however you want to do it. But Phil Quick already knows that this technician is the one associated who finalized this work order. And by the way, it's a service call. So let's see what happened there. He added a door contact and he removed another one. And the technician said that the customer is now happy. The door contact uh, was defective. So he replaced that. So for the service, we collected $45, but let's just say we pay our technician uh, $35 for this service fee. So you can just create his invoice by clicking on that create invoice button. And now what you're doing is you're bulking up your technician's invoices. So if we see the next one, this is an install. Let's create the invoice. And as you will see directly with our side-by-side -side calculator, remember I told you here, this has uncollected charges. So if you take a look, the install upgrade was zero. So it doesn't quite matter. I can still pay my technician on this one. And it doesn't matter if I didn't collect the monies or not from the customer. So over here, I'll take a look. And as you see, requested, okay, it was installed. So I'm going to pay my technician $120 dollars base install and perhaps I also want to pay him thirty dollars for extra contacts and if I want to add a line and perhaps I want to deduct them minus ten dollars for being late to the install late to install you can do deductions as well so let's create this invoice he has hundred and forty dollars on this one let's go back to return to the technician payroll and there's one left that's directly over here let's create this invoice over here as again you see it has uncollected charges there's been no installation upgrade okay I'm taking a look this is going to be hundred and twenty dollars and that's going to be for the base, let's just say install. So it's fully customizable. You can do all that and uh, you can add as many lines again and you can take away and deduct the lines. So let's create that invoice and return to the technician payroll. So as you see, we now cleaned it up. You can also filter because typically you'll pay your technicians based on everything that was installed between a date range. You can select the date range and hit search and it'll show all those technician invoices that have been installed and uh, between that date range to, to pull that up. So if I wanted to jump in and now do sales rep payroll, I can do that directly from the next sales rep, sales seller payroll tab. And if I click on that, I'll show you. It will show all the accounts. So there's 44 accounts this week that have gotten funded. So by default, the sales rep payroll will show you all the accounts that already have been funded. If you pay your technicians, perhaps before fund, you can just check mark this box right here and it'll show you all the jobs that have been funded and not been funded. So you get to see all that stuff. So keep in mind, you can never double pay a sales rep by accident uh, on an account because you already paid them in the past. So this is showing you all the jobs that have been finalized by the technician that have already been funded and on top of it you've never generated an invoice on this account so if you ever down the road want to create a custom invoice for just uh, one job or you want to pay it in advance you can do that as well by going over to the customers tab so let me just show you how to create an invoice it's as simple as this create the invoice and as you see, like we said, we can create custom plugins for you, but by default, we already have the point system that's built into the software. So what you can do is you see the sales reps are splitting the commission on this. It auto calculated their amounts. It's saying that there's a sales manager that's associated with these sales reps. And I want to give this manager an override of $50. So what is it going to do? It shows the total of $465 based on the starting commission, the activation fees, and all the customized things that you have set up in your configuration 
configuration. And uh, you'll be able to associate sales reps to pay scales and have multiple pay scales and go as crazy as you want with it. So you get to see the credit deductions and all that stuff, credit scores. Let's just create this invoice. And what it's going to do is it's going to create three invoices. Because on this account, perhaps at your company, you allow sales reps to uh, split commissions between each other. Well, if you actually do that, you will have the flexibility of creating and making sure that each individual sales rep uh, can have, for example, uh, a split 50-50, 60-40 split. They can do anything fully customizable uh, from within the portal. So as you see over here, $232 and goes to him and 50 cents to this gentleman as well. And as well, the manager, we created a $50 invoice. So for return to the seller payroll, we can create the next one by just clicking on that. It shows the breakdown of the fees. There's $415. There's a manager that it automatically associates the manager with the sales rep because you assigned and configured it. This guy's going to get $50 as well as an override, create the invoice. Simple as that to do your sales rep payroll. And uh, I'll show you just by clicking on the same people so you see a bulk of invoices. This is a different manager. Let's say this manager gets $30 an override. Let's click on that over there. It's generating the invoices in the back. That's simple. And uh, the same sales reps, I want to create this invoice. And perhaps this guy, he gets uh, same $30 override on his sales reps. Boom, that's done. We return, as you see, it went from 44. We just cleaned four of them up in this week. So that's your sales rep payroll. That's your technician payroll. Now at any point you can go and pay your invoices by clicking on pay invoices directly over here. So it's asking you which invoices do you want to pay? Your technicians, which user type, or your sales reps. So to start, let's do our technician payroll. Let's go in and let's click on here the technicians. As you see, this guy, he has three pending invoices. So if I click on that and go get his invoices, these are the invoices we just finalized. So remember the $35 and the two installs that he had. I can collect select all see that there's a $295 check I got to create for this technician. I can choose the pay date of the actual uh, check. So let's just say it's going to be for next Friday and the check number is going to be 45883, uh, let's just say, and mark selected as paid. And now you just paid that technician. Let's go back to the seller and let's find this sales reps who have a, a pending invoices. And I can, let's just say, select this sales rep right over here, get his invoices and find out he's got two pending invoices. I can either just pay him on one of them if I wanted, or I can pay them on both. I can always collect select all. And I know he has $389 that I got to pay him. It's going to be for next week. And his check number is going to be whatever the check number would be. And you would mark the selected as paid and it's done. And now because I paid them, when they log into their portal, they'll see exactly what they got paid on and the breakdown of the commissions. So next I want to show you the contractor invoices and perhaps I want to go to contractor invoice and create a custom invoice for a sales rep. Now, say the sales rep, he got a bonus, and this is, let's call it a bonus, that's a description, and he, let's just say, sold 10 in a week, and you told your company that you, whoever sells 10 in a week, they're going to get a $1,000 bonus. So you can go sold 10 deals in a week, and he has a $1,000 bonus check for this person. You can create this invoice, and now this is going to be pending in his bucket to be paid. So later on, next week, or whenever you want, perhaps you actually want to go back in and uh, create his invoices for that week and pay him this thousand dollars it's as simple as doing that under your sales rep payroll so you can go into the pay the invoices and now if I actually went back to that uh, that sales rep and you see over here it's going to show that he's got a thousand dollars that are pending in his, his bucket and by the way the sales rep will be able to see that as an unpaid invoice sitting on his dashboard to create that healthy competition within your company and that excitement to go out and sell more accounts you can also go to your contractor invoices and click on the the list and see the list of, of invoices, whether they're paid, unpaid, you can filter by any crazy filter that you want to do over here. Perhaps you want to ch uh, search your, your invoices by check number. You want to see which ones are paid, which ones are not between certain dates. You can do everything and anything, even in invoice amounts. So we're very, very clean on that. Next, I want to show you some inventory. If I go to the quantities on hand, it's going to show by default my company, what do I have on hand? Say I want to break down into uh, the Go Control 
panels, I have 58. What's the breakdown of that? Ah, I got 25 at this warehouse, 25 at this warehouse, five with this technician and three with that technician. Perhaps I want to go into just one warehouse and I want to see my Peoria warehouse. Uh, wh what do I have over there? And I want to type in door contacts. I can filter it out like that. Okay. Our search bar is, it updates in real time. So you can actually type it in and motion detector, say it's a, a specific model number, 5816. It'll pull it up directly like that. And you can even see your technicians, what they have on hand, any specific technician like this gentleman and see that. Adding items is pretty much you're adding items to an inventory, uh, such as your technician, such as your warehouses. So what you can do is, let's just say we pl placed an order at ADI, Triad, or wherever you place your order from, and it's coming to this warehouse. Okay, so I bulk up my equipment, and I hit the add items, and it's going to log that we just received this order. Say your technician went and picked up equipment at uh, ADI, Triad, you can put the PO number, bulk up his equipment, like let's just say he went and he collected, he picked up 10 door contacts. He also picked up the go control, uh, three key keypads. He picked up five of those. You would bulk it up, add it to the technician. And now that would be added to his truck and that would be logged. Now, another thing to note is with transferring inventory items. This is typically what the majority of people use. Look how intuitive it is. So you can go transfer items from Two. So we can go from a warehouse to a warehouse. And when warehouse is selected, you'll see perhaps I'm going from my Peoria warehouse to my surprise warehouse. And keep in mind, this list of warehouses, you will custom configure it from your configurations tab so that you have all your warehouses and it'll automatically show in this drop down of exactly which warehouses you have. So I'm going to transfer inventory items. Again, you would select, let's just say we're doing 100 uh, door contacts and we're doing go control keypads. Let's just say 10 of those add that. I'm going to go from this warehouse to this warehouse, or perhaps I'm going from this warehouse to a technician, meaning a technician is coming to this warehouse and picking up this inventory that we have here, transfer the items. And keep in mind, once you are utilizing and using this, this software, it's going to automatically log it and tell you the user that did this, that transferred the inventory items. So as you can tell, it's very detailed. Now you can go from a warehouse to a warehouse, warehouse to technician, perhaps a technician came and pick, gave inventory back to this warehouse. Or perhaps even two technicians met in a field and you're transferring from this uh, technician to this technician. Do you see how detailed and clean that is? You write some note, perhaps uh, met with tech in field and gave him equipment. So you can simply do that. And say it wasn't 100, I can quickly even change it over here to he did 10 and 10, transfer the items, you're done. You just transferred from one, one technician to another. Removing items is basically if you have any equipment that goes bad, you put the RMA number in, you can remove the item from any warehouse or a technician. And let me quickly show you the logs. So if you go to here and want to take a look at your Peoria warehouse, what is going on with it? What's happening? So we did a transfer from a Peoria warehouse to uh, this, this technician on this date in time, it date stamps everything. Say I wanted to have, see what happened with our warehouse and only our Go Control 3 keypads. So I can go in there and see what happened there, but also from a date range because we did our inventory management on a specific day where we did our logs and so on and so forth. You can filter it out by pretty much almost everything to get as detailed as possible. And I'll tell you if you're utilizing our inventory management, which by the way is all included, you will notice that you have way less inventory loss and uh, it's all digitally tracked and traced. So that's just free money that's literally coming back into your company's pocket. Now let's jump into reporting features. And in the reporting features, I want to show you how detailed, and by the way, this is literally, in our opinion, the most robust uh, uh, reporting system in the industry software that ha anything has to offer. So let's just say we want to pull up a list based on, I want to see the creation date. I also want to see a report on my customers, uh, the lead source. I want to see the account number and I want to see the sales reps that are attached to this. And even I can type in, so monitoring, let's say I want to see the, oops, let me go monitoring uh, company. And then I want to see in this report, the monitoring plan. I want to see the status of it. So status, I want to see the monitoring status. And you can go through all the stuff that we have in this list and create any report that you'd want. I want to see the credit score. I also want to see the credit class. So credit class, oops, credit 
class. There we go. And uh, just to make things even more simple, let me just click on the display the report and it's going to automatically pull all this report that we have right now. You can grab this and drag it and drop it. Let's just say you wanted this to be over here and I wanted the credit uh, class to be directly over here. Say I want to filter this whole report. Click on this by only my A's, my A credits. I just filtered it directly like that. I want to go in and filter it by certain credit score or my lead sources. I only want to see my door knocking leads. You see how I can do that really quick and simple? So it's very, very important that you note how clean this is. I want to download this to a spreadsheet. That's cool. I can just click on download it and it'll automatically download it right now. And perhaps I want to save this query so I never have to do it again. And you just click on save the query and perhaps I write uh, crazy report number one. Okay, so click the save button and now every time I come back, I don't have to redo this. All I do is I go over here, I load the report and it automatically does that. But let's get even more detailed. So of this, I want to actually filter by, let's just go monitoring, um, oops, money, monitoring, let's just say company. I want to filter by monitoring company and perhaps monitoring rate. You can do any crazy filter. So I want to see only my Monotronics accounts that are between $30 and uh, $45 in this report. Hit the display the results. It'll actually filter it by that. I can save this query now as crazy report number two, uh, Monotronics filter and hit that save. So now when I actually come in anytime later on in the future, you see how we have these two different reports? So I can go here and I can load that report. It gets rid of those filters. If I go in over here and choose this Monotronics filter, I can click load that and it automatically displays that report directly over there. Hit the display results. So that is just on customers. Next, you can actually generate reports on your leads and you can actually filter all there. And again, download everything like I said. Then your services, you can also do your customer payment payments, you could do your contractor invoices, create all the reports that you want. 100%, it's all included in there. Next, you can go to your user list and perhaps you want to create a brand new user at your company or you want to check out the list. So here it'll show you all the customers, and uh, all the users that you have at your company. Perhaps you want to filter it out by a uh, certain sales rep. You can search for him. You want to search by the roles and you want to go and see uh, perhaps only your sales reps at the company. Hit search. You can even search by the status as enabled or disabled. And you want to go into the sales rep directly over here. See, when you're in to a, let's just say the dashboard and uh, sorry, the user login, the users, and you want to see a certain specific user and you go to him and you want to change his password, disable him or delete him because he left at your company, you have full access to doing that directly from users and then you go to the list. Or perhaps you have a brand new rep at your company. You can go to users, you create new, type in, let's just say this guy's name is Peter, uh, Peter Johnson. And uh, his email address is pj at hotmail.com. And uh, for example, his password, you would enter it, repeat the password, and you would create the user. As simple as that. So you would associate him, let's just say he's a sales rep, and then it gives you the rep ID number. Is he a manager? Yes or no. Which sales team does he belong to? Uh, what pay scale? Because you're going to custom create your pay scales. If you so want automated payroll, you can do that and associate them to a specific uh, payroll, for example. And then also, remember we talked about what do you want them to see when they run credits, whether he has the ability to run credits or not. Okay, so next we have the sales reps teams. Let's go to this and go to the list of teams and uh, you'll see the members that belong to teams. Over here, you can associate, create brand new teams and associate the sales reps to a team. If you associate a sales rep on a team, do not worry, you can't accidentally put two sales reps on one team because we filtered that out. So if let's just say I go into this, this uh, team, you see the team name, the team manager, and these are the list of people that are not associated with a team just yet. So if I add sample seller number 10 to this team, now, when I go to this drop down, you'll see that there is no sample seller number 10. So I can't accidentally associate him with another team. Go back to the list, show all the members. He's now put on this team. So every sale that he gets goes directly to this team. And don't worry, we thought of it all. As I'm sure you know, we are people in the industry. We've created this software in the industry from both the sales side and the technical side, people who have years and years of experience. So we've incorporated certain things in the software, such as let's just say the sample seller number 10 gets in a fight with his manager manager, but he's already put a hundred accounts in with this team. So those numbers are going to stick with this, but then he moves over to sample seller number to sample team number two, his new jobs will then start counting towards the statistics for this team. We thought of it all.
Lastly, in your configuration tab, you'll be able to go through and actually configure everything, your integrations with central stations, merchants, and so on and so forth. Your products, you can go in and add your products, cost, company costs, your warehouses, your, your monitoring companies that you have, and everything from your lead sources, sales rep pay, pay scales, and associate all that with your any given custom plugins perhaps that we create for you or the point system that you use and go in and configure all that yourself. And you also have the flexibility to choose your, your notifications directly from there, who gets what and so on and so forth. So having said that, the last thing I want to show you really quick is if you're logged into the software or somebody with multiple roles or your secretary, you can even go into your customers and go to your account list from directly over here. And what you'll notice is you'll have your full customer database. Perhaps you want to pull your customer by name, account number, phone number, and address. And this is typically the best way to pull your customer to find them really quick. Or again, we had that quick search tool up here. But say you can't pull your customer by this, we have an advanced search. Click on that. And as you see, you literally have almost everything that you can possibly think of to find your customer. Perhaps I want to find my customer that my customers that begin with the letter A that have a credit score between 700 and 725. And I also want to uh, pull up. They belong there. Sorry, they are in the state of Arizona and uh, they have been funded equals yes. And it's with the monitoring company Monitronics. So you can filter and do any crazy custom search. And once you hit search, it'll automatically pull uh, all your customers that fit this criteria. So I'm going to just close that. I'm not going to run that and go back to the dashboard and say, thank you so much for, sh for allowing us to show you exactly the power of FillQuick. Now, we always add brand new features to FillQuick, and as new features come out, we instantly update our clientele and say, hey, you, this brand new feature is now available in FillQuick, so you get it automatically in your email. So if you're looking to actually get a one-on-one -on -one demo with us, it's absolutely free. Just hit the schedule demo button on this site on PhilQuick site over at philquick.com and you will see that we can actually do a one-on-one -on -one demo if you have any questions or feel free to give us a call at any time and our, our phone number is directly on the website. Thank you so much and I look forward to serving you as a customer of PhilQuick.